Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy between a blog around the OA. Welcome the host to OA Now. The host of Between Communities on Corey Neighbor Tell. Oakland Activities like Association News and voice Information. On SoundCloud and here's those your host, Sammy Taramino. We've got two coaches we're talking to this week here on this edition of the podcast here. We're going to start with the new coach of the Berkeley Bears, Coach Casey Humes. Coach, welcome on to the podcast. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me this uh, this morning. Um, when you look at Berkeley, the when you look at Berkeley, the first two years, you know, 12 and six, and then the last two years, two and six, two and 16. So recap, you know what I mean? Recap what's been going on at the, on at Berkeley. Um, I think for the last two years, um, at Berkeley, we've kind of been dealing with, uh, you know, the residuals of COVID. Um, we had a, you know, a large population of players before COVID and then after COVID, we still had a core, a good, nice core group of kids, but we did still lose a lot of kids. And I think, um, you know, in in the years after that followed COVID, just kind of follow, uh, finding, um, you know, stability amongst the players and continuity amongst the players and just kind of, you know, being focused on, you know, doing things and doing things the right way kind of got it away a little bit. Um, from us, and I think uh, that kind of reflected a little bit on the field. You, t- um, you took over at Berkeley. Um, you know, how's been the um, transition been going for you over there? How's been the coaching transition been for you guys over there at Berkeley? The coaching transition over here has been has been pretty solid. Um, we did go uh, in a different direction to um, get all new coaches. Um, we, we didn't retain any um, coaches from the previous regime. Um, so getting those guys in, the new guys in, and getting them acclimated with the players has, have been, has been a good transition for us. Um, we had a very strong weight room um, this off season, and then that followed right into the spring season, um, lifting and kind of doing some light conditioning. And then now we're in the summer where we're getting a – you know, out into these seven on sevens and we're getting to install some of our passing games and um, the the, ba- the basics of our run game as well. Um, how's the, um, how the players you think adjusting really well, obviously to the um, coaching change? I mean, like how, how do you think the players have been like, you know, have you seen any differences, you know what I mean? Like with the players this off season? Um, I have, we've got a lot of guys doing a lot of uh, off season work, getting some extra work outside of the school as well which is uh, something that um, I don't think a lot of our players were doing um, in previous years. But then also, we've also just, you know, raised the standard here. And um, we have uh, decided, you know, to, like I said, up the standard and kind of hold these guys to a completely different norm than what they're used to. So in that, you'll have some people that are, you know, slower to react. But I think for the most part, our guys kind of hit the ground running, taking those challenges head on and kind of, you know, answer the call. And when you look at Berkeley um, offensively, um, obviously, um, you know, Berkeley's been known to play, run a lot of power, a lot of a lot of that power offense. Um, any changes to the scheme that you guys plan on going to this year on both sides of football? Uh, no, we still plan on playing to the strengths of the players that we, you know, have within the program. Um, Berkeley has been known to be able to have, you know, some of the bigger backs or the heavier backs who can run, um, you know, and kind of carve out three to five yards for us per run. Um, We're going to try to stick, you know, with running the ball. Um, But I think this year um, we're also going to put an emphasis on making sure that when we do go to the air, we're efficient. Um, we know what we're doing and we know where we want to go and how to attack certain defenses. And on the uh, other side of the ball, we, we're going to stick in the 4-2-5, um, you know, give guys different looks. Um, you know, we're going to we're gonna be able to play in a soft zone and, and disguise some things and um, shoring up our man coverage as well. So then that way we don't have to be stuck playing in one or two coverages the entire game. We can kind of open up the playbook and, and force guys to do different things. Talk about some players, impact players that you expect to make some noise this year. Um, 
Obviously, you know, you look at Berkeley. Berkeley's had some really talented players that come through that pipeline, the system there. Um, any impact players OA Nation needs to know about? Um, some impact players that we have uh, out of our senior class. Um, we have seniors Caleb Collins and, and Anthony Anderson. Um, they'll be, you know, vital for us on the defensive side of the ball. Um, we've got an offensive line, defensive lineman named Parker Hatfield. Um, you know, he's been with the varsity. Um, all three of these guys have been with the varsity since they were sophomores. So to be able to see these guys kind of grow into themselves as athletes and then in this final year be able to, um, you know, be players that, you know, we look to to kind of rein the guys in and, and get them going on Friday nights. Um, we got some juniors as well that uh, were able to play last year on varsity to kind of get them ready to, for this year and for the, the next year that they'll be playing. Um, uh, Colin Richardson, he played tackle for um, varsity last year. And then uh, Jack Rittenberry, um, he played on the offensive line as well last year. Having those guys get in early and kind of get thrown into the fire early, I think solidified them to be ready to take on a bigger role and, and kind of be um, extra pieces on that offensive line to get us um, moving and, and doing what we want uh, to do up front. I know on the back end, <clears throat> we have some more um, senior guys that'll be uh, coming into their own and Blake Bridges and, and Willem Alla, um, two senior defensive backs that'll be um, able to play in the secondary, kind of disrupt some passes and make it a little difficult for guys. And then the juniors in that back half as well, um, Eli Corey, mm -hmm. he's kind of been a uh, Swiss Army knife in the summer so far where he's played in multiple positions and, you know, he kind of takes it in stride, um, playing in the secondary a little bit, but also getting some work with some linebackers. Um, ben Bullock is another guy to – be looking out for in that junior class. Um, another kid who was thrown into the fire, uh, <clears throat> voted uh, our, one of our defensive players of the year last year by the team. Um, he's also been one of our guys who has been active in the offseason work, uh, getting some extra work in the winter months and even in the spring months to solidify himself to be ready uh, for the season upcoming. Um, when you look at, of course, we're going to look at also your schedule. We're going to talk um, the division you're in, of course, the gold as well. You guys open up the year with Wall Lake Central on the road. Um, last year was not was not fun at Hurley in that game against Wall Lake Central. Um, not at all. Talk about, you know, talk about, you know, playing the Vikings week one in Wall Lake. Um, you know, obviously that's going to be a really interesting matchup for you guys going up against them. Yes. Um, it's always tough to open the season, you know, on the road and, um, just given, you know, what was, what, uh, what was, what dealt, what we were dealt last year. Um, you kind of just got to, you know, take it head on. Um, you know, the, the message to the guys is that, you know, we kind of have to rebrand ourselves in a whole, you know, we don't want people to remember the, the, the struggles that we had last year. Um, this year we're attacking the game plan full circle where we're going to make sure um, that we're dialed in. Our guys are dialed in. We know what they want to do, how to attack it. I think just being almost over-prepared um, so then that way our guys are kind of just playing and not necessarily thinking, making sure these guys are – uh, physically ready to go. I know uh, that first August game is still kind of a scorcher. So making sure our guys are ready to go, you know, we're physically ready to play in a game like that. I know that they um, also have something that they want to prove for themselves and kind of um, reshape and, and, and re, uh, reform the narrative over there. So I think week one at Wald Lake, um, that's going to be a dogfight between Berkeley and Wall Lake schools because, to me, it's two teams that are rebranding. I know that they got a new uh, head coach over there as well. So they're also in a rebrand um, and kind of a rebuild situation over there too. And um, given, like I said, what we dealt with last year, it's just the first stop, you know, of many of guys that, 
you know, we saw last year that we're going to get the chance to go up against this year and kind of, you know, rewrite the wrongs of last. And when you look at your schedule also, before we talk division, um, you guys close out the year with uh, Madison Heights Lampier coach, um, Coach Roy Ozerowski over there. Um, talk about your non-conference a little bit also besides playing against them. Um, you know, you got Walt, you got Madison Heights Lamp here on that schedule. And, um, you know, talk about your non-conference before we talk about the um, the, um, the, lead, the damn division. So um, we got non-conference games against Lamphere. Um, we have non-conference games against um, Rochester. We play Jackson Northwest. And then we also play Troy uh, Athens. Um, Athens, uh, Athens is always a tough matchup for Berkeley. You know, they run that T. And they're very efficient, you know, in what they do over there. Um, so I think uh, having them as our second game of the year is going to be, you know, one of our bigger tests, you know, because the most change or the most learning happens with the team between the first and the second game. So to be able to get um, an opportunity to see them week two will be a, a true test into the work that we're doing. And, and I'm just excited to have our guys come out and, and be competitive against Troy Athens um, year to year, as we've seen them, it has always been tough playing them. Uh, they're very run heavy and I expect that to be the case this year. So we'll be have to, we'll have to be ready to play and play physical. Um, we have to play and host Jackson Northwest. Um, and those guys will be a tough opponent. I think, um, they went five and four last year, and then the previous year before that, they went four and five as well. They'll take the trip to come see us on a Saturday. And uh, I know that um, they also are in a very tough division. Mm -hmm. And I know taking that trip on a Saturday morning will be something that they'll make us uh, essentially pay or try to make us pay for uh, playing on that Saturday morning. But um, I know that they're going to be a very tough opponent as well. Um, you know, they like to move the ball on the ground and, and be physical up front as well. So, you know, our first two non-conference opponents are really going to try to take it to us on the ground. And I'm looking up, I'm looking for our guys to be able to hold our own and come out victorious on the back end. Um, Rochester, um, I haven't had much experience in, in playing Rochester, but I know that uh, Rochester is always a, a tough draw for Berkeley. Um, you know, they, they have a lot of speed on the outside and they also can play physical up front. So I'm just looking forward to being able to game plan and kind of match up and play that chess game with Rochester. And then, of course, our last non-conference game against Lamphere is kind of, uh, I would say, one of the more sentimental games. I know Re Coach Ray Ostrowski is uh, a former Berkeley football coach as well. And I know that uh, Lamphere has um, some of for some former Berkeley coaches on their staff over there as well, outside of Coach Ostrowski. So I think that, um, I guess, the coming of time game for us um, will be that last non-conference game with Lamphere. It'll just have a lot of emotion. Um, our coaches that are there, a lot of the kids know and have relationships with. So I think it'll just be a game of passion where um, our guys are trying to go out and kind of show, you know, what they what they can do, what they've learned, what they've um, been able to gain from their football experience and, and how um, the coaches on the other side is, have even impacted them and uh, inspired them to to play and to stay in football. And then let's talk the division. I mean, there's one team in particular that I know a lot of Berkeley fans, you know what I mean? Like really don't like, and that is Royal Oak. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> you, you, you played against them. You, you gone up against them. I see like, I watched a lot of those, the curve games, the battle of Woodward games. What is your yes. initial thoughts about, the Ravens when you see them we don't like them mm -hmm. I think it's that's very clear cut um 
is that the Berkeley Bears do not like the Roy Hello Gravens. And I think it's a rivalry that's um, kind of been good for the program. It's been, you know, kind of one of the highlights for the boys, just because a lot of these kids that, you know, they're playing with across the way they either grew up with or played on previous sports teams with. Um, so there's a lot of familiar familiarity with the guys on and off the field. And I think when you have that opportunity to play against guys who essentially go to the rival high school, but there is also some like friendships and some uh, underlying relationships between some of the guys between the two schools, I think it's that it makes for an interesting matchup because it's a little bit of, I know this guy, but what is he capable of doing? And I know our guys are really, really amped to get back on the winning side and then also to play Royal Oak for our homecoming is just another added bonus for our guys this year. And when you look at, I remember those, the student sections can get really, really intense. I mean, like I've seen it. Yes. I mean, I've seen it from the Raven's Nest. I've seen it from the Bear Pack. I mean, like, I know the chance of Royal Joke. I know that. Um, I mean, like, when you look at that matchup and then you add a trophy to that, you know, the Battle of Woodward trophy, you know, the ba- I mean, either, it's either Lexington Boulevard or Catalpa Drive. I mean, yeah. what is your thought process when you look at, you know, getting ready for that game, you know, knowing that, you know, the kids are going to get amped up, knowing they're going to get fired up for that game. I mean, what is your thought process? I mean, you played in this rivalry. You know what I mean? What is yeah. your thought process? You know, my my, thr- my thought process is honestly a controlled chaos. You know, you don't want the guys to get too, um, too high and then you're burning yourself out before the game. But then you also don't want it to be where they're not, you know, as amped because you're trying to control it on the other end. So it's one of those situations where it's like you got something boiling but it's my job as the head coach to kind of keep it at an even level right before kickoff. And then the top can come off and then the boil can boil over. Um, Like I said, it's one of the games that our kids are looking forward to the most to be able to play in this rivalry. Uh, And they kind of like our seniors at least kind of set the tone, you know, before they make their way out of high school to kind of, you know, hoist that Catalpa, that Catalpa sign at the end of the game this year. Um, I know that last year we lost it um, and not in a uh, competitive fashion, which is fine. You know, Royal Oak went out, they earned it. But I think this year, um, you know, I think that we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that that sign comes back home with us. And when you look at, of course, the other matchups in the division, you look at Avondale, you got Pontiac, you got Ferndale. That's another rivalry. It's Ferndale. So talk about yes. that rivalry a little bit in your eyes with the Eagles. Yes. Um, that Ferndale rivalry is something uh, it is – that is also another rivalry as well that I think has been brewing for a very long time. Maybe I can get with uh, Eric over there and kind of put together some little trophy for um, – the Eagles and the Bears to kind of share too, because that's been a longstanding brewery. I remember um, playing in uh, my senior year at their homecoming. And I remember having nearly just as many whiteout fans as they had regular Ferndale um, homecoming fans. And I just remember the atmosphere in that game was electric. And even in the game last year, when our varsity played Ferndale, it was a packed house. So I know that people enjoy our fans enjoy the players enjoy playing against a team like Ferndale, because you know that you're going to, you know, you're going to play in high competition. They're going to come and they're going to try to put it on you. They're going to try to come and show people that they are better than you last year. You know, as everyone knows, they got the better of us, but this year we're kind of on our revenge tour. You know, we get to see six of, you know, the nine opponents that we played last year. So for us, it's kind of, you know, rewriting the narrative and and letting people know that we're going to come out. You know, we're going to take some punches, but we're also going to stand firm and and throw ours back. You know, we're not taking nothing off. We know, you know, what the expectation of Berkeley is and what people think, you know, that 
you know, we won't be able to recover, but uh, we're here to let people know, you know, we're back on the horse and, and we coming for business. And when you look at the theme revenge tour, I know a lot of your kids have wrote that on, on Twitter and X revenge tour. You know, I've heard a lot about it. Um, obviously, you know, you look at a course of struggle the last two years and, you know, and I, I, I think this team can be on a, I mean, this team's going to be on a revenge tour and you look at the schedule. We already talked about that. It looks manageable for you guys to have a bounce back year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going to take continued, you know, effort and hard work on all levels, coaching, you know, players, you know, doing what needs to be done on not only on the field, but in the classroom, staying eligible, you know, our guys getting into the playbook, knowing their plays. And and so that's why, you know, we've taken a, a, a precise effort to make sure that we're hitting everything that we need to hit to make sure our guys are, are the best prepared going in, seeing these opponents week to week. Um, I, my staff has has been paramount in making sure that um, we're hitting all of our landmarks and making sure nothing is getting swept under the rug or, you know, things that um, we struggled with last year and the year before that we're kind of hardwiring it and getting it um, solid. So then that way it isn't a weakness for us this year. So I, I think, you know, with the guys writing the revenge tour, it's, it's speaking to the, the, the energy they have moving into the season, you know, that this isn't a lick your chops year. This is kind of, you know, their year to kind of get back on the horse and show people that they mean business. And when you look at, of course, the, um, when you look at, I want to also talk about program strength a little bit here. I mean, how's the sub varsity going for you? How's the, um, you know, how's the middle school level going for you guys over there at Berkeley? Um, how, how, how has that been going for you guys? It's going good. Um, right now we have our, our JV is about 37, 38 kids, um, in the summer. So I anticipate we'll get more. And then in that, um, may open the door for us to even host, um, our own freshman team this year. Um, I know that our middle school program is growing. Um, I think 28 kids from our middle school program have come over to the high school as eighth graders and will be playing, um, this season at the high school, um, all the way down to the Steelers. Um, we've had a, we had a smaller, um, a fairly smaller Steeler class this past year, but I know that, um, the bears being involved with the Steelers at the youth level, um, our numbers will just continue to grow. Um, that was also, uh, another reason that I wanted to be here at Berkeley is because, um, the community is behind the football team from the high school to the middle school, all the way down to Steelers. And that was something that um, this program is very unique, where they have a youth team that feeds into the high school and they have a middle school program that can feed players right into the high school. And to have those guys all on the same page and you know, understanding and, and reaching toward the same goals. It just kind of speaks to the program integrity as as an as a whole that we're setting ourselves up to be a program that can have continued success because we're constantly growing and getting bigger and adding more and more pieces to the puzzle. And you played here at Berkeley as well. I mean, you played at Berkeley. How important is it for you, you know what I mean, to be, you know, to be the – um to be the head coach here at Berkeley High School, especially when you played here at Berkeley? Yeah, I uh, I got to play under uh, Coach Jim McDougal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things that Coach McDougal instilled in me is like, you know, to, to do everything at 100%. If it's something that you want and, you know, it, it, you it's a goal that you have, you have to be fully determined 100% in whatever it is that you do to achieve that goal. And for me, when I got back into coaching, I knew that I wanted to coach at Berkeley High School. My heart was still there. Um, right out of high school, I had the opportunity to coach wrestling at Berkeley High School. And that played a major part in knowing that Berkeley is where I wanted to be. Um, when uh, Sean Shields brought me onto his staff at Berkeley, 
I was very appreciative and even being able to coach, you know, the lower levels under him, it just solidified it to me even more that Berkeley was where I wanted to be. It's where I wanted to start my own head coaching program. And it's where I want to be to kind of build something that I also was a part of. And of course, I'm the, another question here. I got to ask you, I'm, I'm a big uniform critic. So any thoughts, any changes with the uniforms this upcoming season? Changes in the upcoming season, not currently, but there are some thoughts about what we could change moving past this current season and into the next season. Um, maybe a, a white helmet or um, to complement the blue and white that we have on the varsity level, but then a white helmet would also complement the maroon and white that the JV has on the lower level. So um, this year we'll still feature our maroon um, with the maroon bear and the blue and white jersey. Um, we'll have some maroon accents to complement the helmet. And then on our lower levels, we'll still have the maroon and white as the, the two jersey sets. Okay. And then um, when you look at Hurley Field, I mean, obviously it is getting, it got a makeover. Um, new turf being yes, put sir. in there. Um, talk about, you know, the, the turf. Talk about having Hurley Field with the new, new turf um, gearing up for Friday nights. Okay. It's just, it's just another added piece to that puzzle that I was explaining before is that, you know, the, the, the change came on the, the football front, you know, the guys got a new coach. We moved into a new season. We're getting a new field right before our new season. So it just speaks volumes that um, Berkeley is kind of changing. You know, things are going to be different now, you know, um, to be able to field uh, our team on the new field um, week three against Pontiac. That'll be that'll be everything and more. Um, having a new field this year is is, is a symbol, too, um, for these guys getting to rewrite the ship from last year. You know, it's a new field. Nobody's won or lost on it. You know, all mindset and, and, and consciousness can go on and setting the tone the right way for this new field. Uh, we got the big new bear logo in the middle. Um, I think that's exciting for the players as well. Um, having Berkeley featured in the end zone and the, uh, old, uh, the older script is another draw. And I think just having Hurley be redone after so many years has the people in the community excited. Um, I know even just uh, being a former Berkeley alum, I've had other alums reach out to me and ask how the new fields come in and how the new fields look in and um, if people are getting excited. And when you look at, there's a lot of excitement, you know, with the new, with new, with, with the changes over there at Berkeley. Um, before I let you go, um, Coach, um, what is your expectations this year for Berkeley football coming forward? Um, I think the expectation for Berkeley football is, you know, the similar expectations of, of all teams. Um, you know, we want to set the right tone. Um, you know, we're trying to build trust with our players and, and uh, a family atmosphere with our players. And I, I think that that takes time. We're going to be competitive every Friday night. You know, I'm, uh, I, in my mind, when we put it together all on the field, the wins and the losses will take care of itself. Um, we need to be competitive in, in every game on Friday nights and on Saturdays. I hope um, with the work that we're doing in the off season and in the season, that that translates into more wins. Like I said, I want to surprise. Um, I want to be surprised at the end of the year about what, what it is that we do. I don't think I want to set a limit or an expectation for the growth that these guys can see. Um, I think that if we come out and we compete and we're ready to play on Friday nights, we're going to surprise some people. We're going to surprise ourselves, And I think we'll be placed in a better situation than we were last year and even the year before. 
Um, one other question I forgot to uh, mention earlier on the um, interview here. Um, how's the quarterback situation looking here at Berkeley for you guys? I mean, obviously, that's a very important position when you look at for Berkeley is the quarterback spot. Yeah, so um, we've got a junior quarterback coming up. His name is Connor Bushy. Okay. And then we have a uh, backup quarterback who's been working um, behind him named Noah Lambertson, who's also a junior. Um, these guys have you know, been working. Connor has been working himself um, with his quarterback coaches over the winter and um, getting in the weight room with us to keep his physique right, um, making sure, you know, he's got the reads and um, he's studying coverages and fronts and making sure that he's mentally prepared for what he's going to see this season, his first year as the varsity quarterback. And then with that as well, we're bringing our um our, our backup quarterback up to speed as well. Um, he wasn't fortunate enough to um, have any off-season quarterback coaching, but um, with the coaches that we have on staff, we'll be able to bring him up to speed. And I think he'll be a, a, a very, very good complement to what we have in our, um, in our guy and Connor Bushy. How are the numbers over there at Berkeley? How are, how, how, I mean, how are the numbers over there? Uh, they're pretty good at program wide. We're sitting at about 82. Wow. Um, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be more. Um, the closer and closer we get to August, you know, sometimes, you know, kids are unsure if they want to do the football thing until, you know, they get back into school. And that's what everybody's talking about is the game Friday nights. So I think that we'll have more guys roll out, um, you know, when jerseys and stuff kind of get distributed. Um, you know, that excitement will grow for the kids who don't, um, who aren't a hundred percent sold on if football is their sport or not. Um, my expectation for numbers, I think when it's all said and done at the end of this year, we'll be looking at about 85 to 90 kids. That's not bad. That would not, that's not bad. And you got 82 right now in the system. That's, yeah. that's very good when you look at it, yeah. you know, I mean, and it's really exciting. And then it, yeah, for first year, um, having 82 in the program, and, and I know that there'll be more. Um, it, it just, like I said, it speaks to um, the building blocks, you know, from the lower levels and, and guys staying with it and staying committed and, and just, you know, grinding it out. And when you look at the um, season coming up, I mean, like, I know a lot of people are getting excited in the, in the Berkeley community, hoping to right the wrong um, from last last two years. Um, I know that you, I know that the kids have talked about your playing career, obviously. Um, you know, so before I let you go, um, when you look at your schedule, I mean, like you're taking it one game at a time. So, you know, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, coach. I'm going to let you go here. Um, I will see you at media day here. Coach Casey Humes. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. All right. Thank you for having me. You have a blade. You have a blessed day. God bless, Coach. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, that was Berkeley Coach Casey Humes here on the podcast here. Um, when you look at Berkeley this year, people, you know, when you look at it and talking to Coach Humes, um, you know, you look at Berkeley and you say, there's nowhere to go but up with this team because last two years, it's been bad. I mean, it's been it's two and two and 16. You, it, you can't, it's hard to describe it. You know what I mean? Really with what everything's gone on over there. Um, you look at Berkeley and you look at that schedule, it looks manageable. I mean, you know, I'm a little surprised, you know, that, um, you know, they got Jackson Northwest in the schedule because, um, you know, playing on a Saturday, I mean, like, you know, I mean like, um, but they have, but this program's had some good wins. I mean, you really look at Berkeley you know, they've had some great wins. I remember the game two years ago, a couple of years ago, when they knocked off Lavoni Clarenceville, and that was a crazy game. I mean, Lavoni Clarenceville was coached by um Avenue coach coach Bob Meyer, who's now at Avondale. So, you know, there is a lot of expectation. There's a lot of progress when you look at Berkeley. I think Berkeley, they could surprise some people. I mean, they I mean, like they could surprise some people. I mean, there's just there's some questions, obviously. Um, but you know, when you look at the Bears, I mean, they could be a team that could be a prime team that could surprise some people. 
in the um in the gold this year. When you look at that division, you look at Avondale there, you got Ferndale's there, Pontiac and Pontiac. We talked to Coach Jefferson. Um, you know, um, we talked to Coach Jefferson recently. Um, and I and we know what he's been doing at Pontiac. I mean, like, and then of course we know about that rivalry at Royal Oak. And last year was not a fun experience for them. Um, when that one, when Berkeley lost that one, I think it was 43, nothing. Um, but I know it was, it was not close. I mean, so there's a lot of, you know, expectation when you look at the bears, a lot of, you know, I mean, especially, you know, when you look at a team that's expectations right now are they're low right now, they are very low right now. I mean, considering the last two years, but if you're coach Humes, you know, this is a good opportunity to right the wrong. You know what I mean? I mean, get back to where Berkeley's been at the last, the last, um, you know, like in, the, in 2020 and 2021 when they went 12 and six, um, you know, in those two years when they were in the playoffs. I mean, they were, you know, when, you know, I had this program, I remember ranked number four in the poll. And, you know, and then I think that Rochester game looks very winnable for them. I think it's going to be a really interesting game. Um, Athens will be very interesting for them. Um, but I think it'll be a really good game. I think it'll be a good game between the Red Hawks and the Bears. I mean, like, you know, I, I think Berkeley's got a chance, I think, to <coughs> really right some wrongs from last year. And I, I think they're going to be a team that does that heading into the year. So there is a lot of a lot of expectation when you look at Berkeley. Um, and I think, and I think it wouldn't surprise me if Berkeley does overachieve. It really wouldn't surprise me if the Bears do overachieve and they do um, surprise some people heading into the season. So there is a lot of expectation when you look at Berkeley. And also there is going to be, you know, when you look at the Bears, um, I think the Bears could really, really make some serious noise this year in the um, gold. I think they can. I mean, but, you know, they, but that Spurs, they got to beat Wild Lake Central, and that's a tough matchup, especially for them. Now, yeah, Wild Lake Central's got a new coach, new system. They're going to have everything basically set for them, you know what I mean, to really surprise some people. And I think they're going to beat some people this year. I really, I mean, like, I think, you know, they can beat some people this year. So we'll see. I think, you know, I really think when you look at the Bears this year, I think when talking to Coach Humes, um, I got that sense of, you know, that they they want to turn this thing around. They're gonna do that. Um, I did talk to I mean, when we talked to uniforms. I'm not little, you know, the white helmet thing scares me. Other than that, everything else, I think Berkeley, you know, they're heading in the right direction. I think this is a team that. They can do some damage this year. They could surprise some people in this division. Can they make the playoffs? It's a possibility. They can, but I know they're going to have to get some help, I think, for um for them to make the playoffs. I mean, like, they're going to have to win games, obviously. But, you know, obviously, you know, you got to, you know, you look at that division. You got Avondale's there, Ferndale's there. Um, They could make some noise in Division 2 if, um, if they get, um, if they get off to a good start, they win the division. You know, I th I clearly think if they win the division, clearly I think they're going to be in the playoffs. Even though it's going to be a tall order, especially when you look at teams like Avondale, who's got who's very athletic. They got a lot of a lot of proven talent coming back, and then Ferndale, they got a lot of proven talent coming back. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how this goes when you look at Berkeley going forward. I think they could surprise some people this year. Um. When you look at it and talking to Coach Humes, um, I really think that this team could do some significant damage um, this season. And I think, you know, that could be something to really watch for. Um, I know um, we're, I mean, I know we'll talk to Coach Humes again at Media Day. Um, we'll talk about the, um, you know, how Berkeley's been progressing um, this, um, this offseason as well, especially at Media Day. So that is something to really, really look forward to when you look at the um, Berkeley Bears is there's a lot to look forward to a lot of excitement for this program. A lot of, um, you know, everything's starting fresh, new field, new, um, 
new field, new um, new mindset. You know, hopefully it does. Hopefully it can produce results for the Berkeley Bears um football program this upcoming season. So a lot of that program over there, Berkeley, is a team that's on the rise, and I think people are gonna st- need to start paying attention to Berkeley as we go forward from here. All right, we're gonna take a break here. Um, we're gonna talk to Oxford coach Zach Line here on the podcast. Welcome back to Oi Now here. I'm Sammy Tamina here. We got the um, coach of the Cats, Mr. Zach Lyon here. Coach, um, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, Sammy. Thanks for having me on, man. Uh, when you look at the Wildcats last year, you know, I've I called the schedule that you had one of the most t- dauntingest tasks that, that I've seen in the years I've done this podcast and the years I've been around the OAA. Um, you had to win three games just to get in the postseason, knocking off a proven powerhouse in UD Jesuit. Um, talk about recap last season a little bit on your eyes. Uh, you know, I think it was just a testament of our guys. Just keep working. Um, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have games here and there where you just, we don't play Oxford brand of football. Um, you know, I, I think our guys have zero quit in them. Um, so we're all, we always have a chance in every game. We enjoy having a harder schedule. Um, I mean, you look at this year, we open up with Ike and we end the season with Dakota. So, uh, it doesn't get any any easier this year, especially with our OAA uh, play that we have. I mean, and we're gonna talk about your your schedule this year. I mean, like, I mean, like, I talked to my um BT co-host Anthony Termina and my OA now co-host Ian Locke about your schedule, and I said to myself, "This is my God, the most brutal schedule I have seen a team play in years." I mean, you guys playing Ike Week One at Swinehart's. Then you got Harper Woods at home, who's the D4 state champions. And then Macomb, Dakota, the close out the year. That's not even mentioning the red, you know? So. Yeah. No, no, it's it's a really good schedule. You know, I, I think when you play, not like any team is bad, but when, when you try to play off teams, you have off weeks. You, your kids aren't as focused. Your, your practices aren't as intense. Now, you can try to say they are, but they're just not, right? But when you're playing week in and week out, you're playing the top dog you're going to continue to get better and better. And when, you know, you might not go nine and zero, but when it matters in playoffs, you're going to be ready to go and you're going to, you're going to give some teams problems. So that, you know, obviously the, the peak of, of high school football is winning a state championship. So you got to play teams that are going to get you ready to, to make a run and do those types of things. And so that's why we're, that's where we're trying to get to. And when you're looking at this, when you're looking at the teams here, I mean, like Ike's a proven powerhouse, open up at Swinehart against them. Harper Woods, he knows the D4 state champions, Macomb, Dakota, proven powerhouse. I mean, I mean, like, you know, when you look at when you look at just playing those three teams in particular, you know, those are playoff worthy teams when you look at those teams. And then last year and then that's not mentioned the red when you look at, you know, you're going against teams like West Bloomfield, Orion, um, Clarkson. I mean, I mean, Adams. I mean, like, that's not an easy slate at all. You missed West Bloomfield in there. I forgot. I apologize. <laughs> no, I mean, there, there's definitely not been easy. And I think the harder part is adjusting week to week to all the different offenses and defenses you see at this level. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, you go from the, you know, the wing tee to a spread offense to, you know, you come see us, you get a zone team. And then, you know, just down the line, you're constantly preparing for something new. So, um, you know, but I'm excited about the team we have. We got a group that I feel the excitement out of them. They're ready for to have a good season. So it, it's fun to work with them. That's why you coach. Talk about the players you got coming back. You got Jack at quarterback here. Um, Jack is really, when I saw Jack play, I mean, like, he has really improved as a player. I remember the Stony Creek game very well when he went nuts in that game. So talk about how Jack has really improved at quarterback for you guys. Yeah, Jack has done a really good job. His biggest improvement is his leadership and his command of the huddle. So, you know, as soon as you walk into the huddle, you're going to have confidence with Jack because he's going to speak clearly. He's going to speak with confidence, uh, and he's he knows the plays better now. So he's not just saying words; they mean nothing to him. He he knows the playbook. We spent a lot of time this off season at lunch times going over the playbook, um, where he's reading, where he's going, what his running backs doing, why he's doing this. So he's in a good spot as far as X's and O's go. So it makes him more confident as a player. Um, and then obviously Jack is naturally gifted in throwing the football and he's got enough speed and quickness to make people miss. So, um, he's, he's going to be a really good quarterback for us this year. We're looking forward to him having a great junior year. Uh, and obviously we got Luke Johnson. I know that's you my love next Luke. one. That's my next one. It's Luke Johnson. 
Luke's a stud. You know, Luke is Luke is our only named captain so far. Uh, named him in, in the spring and his off season. So, um, you know, Luke is our our leader. You know, so as he goes, we go. He uh, obviously a great player. He's gifted in a lot of ways. Uh, he's taken a big jump this year so far. I can already tell as as a leader, being vocal, um, and holding his guys accountable. So that is a huge asset for us. Obviously, Luke at linebacker, running back is um, you know. It's a great thing to have in our in our in our arsenal. Um, talk about Jack some targets, proven wide receiver targets. I mean, obviously, you, the first name I think about with um is Jake Champagne. I mean, obviously a basketball standout. Um, any wide receivers that you know what I mean that um that we need to know, uh, OA Nation needs to know about. Uh, I think we're we're pretty deep this year at both those positions. Um, you know, we'll probably roll a lot of guys. Jake is a is a great receiver for us. He's a big body, catches the ball well. I think the basketball side of him allows him to use his body and, you know, box people out in space. So uh, he's getting better and better at that. And there's something that comes with being a senior where you even have more confidence. You can see that out of Jake now. He's confident in what he's doing. Uh, he's not, he's not asking as many questions as he used to, so he knows what he's doing more, and he's just flying around having fun. You know, Liam O'Neal is another one who it, it has a ton of speed, a ton of shiftiness. He can make things happen. Um just going down the list here. Eli Carpenter, Carpenter will probably play some receiver for us this year. Uh, he's a, um, a savvy receiver. He has good speed, good hands. Um, you know, we have we have a good arsenal of receivers. Uh, we have three or four more that I could mention. Um, those are just, you know, three seniors I can think of off the top of my head. Um, talk about the line. Obviously, when you look at offense and defensive line, obviously um, – you had a very good line last year. So how's the line situation over there at Oxford? Uh, I couldn't tell you. You know, that's one of those things when we're in underwear football, just wearing helmets, you can't – I can't tell you who's it going to be. I We have a, a good amount of returning guys or guys that we moved up from freshman to play JV that, you know, might be ready to be exposed this year at a younger age to the varsity level. Um, so we are deep at that position, which is nice. We haven't been that way in the past. Uh, so – we're in a good spot there, but this year we are – we have not put a starting five together for any of our camps yet. We are trying to get as many guys reps as possible to, you know, get our depth and get our understanding and, um, you know, grow our program. Any names the OA Nation needs to know about on the lines? Uh, I think Liam Carr is our leader on that line. He's a senior this year. Uh, he's done a ton of work this offseason, getting better shape, move quickly. Um, so just the amount of work he's put in is going to make him a better player this year. Uh, he's smart. Uh, Brennan Cass was a great guard for us last year. Uh, and then Liam Cumbie is another returner that we have. So we have three seniors that will be returners. Um, and then after that, I couldn't tell you. You know, it's 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 competition, which is awesome. And that's the beauty of Oxford. When things have good competition, you know what I mean, it, always, it brings the best out of you. You know what I mean? For sure. And yep. Let's talk about, you know, I mean, we already talked the schedule. We already talked about um, – returning players. I mean, like any newcomers that, um, that OA nation needs to know about, like they can make some noise this year for you guys. Uh, you know, I think Dean Rice made some noise last year. He's a tight end linebacker for us. He does a really good job. He's physical. He's got good hands. He's, he blocks well. Um, you got Preston Wilder who will be going into a sophomore year. He played a lot for us last year as a freshman. Um, as you know, going from eighth grade football to varsity football is a huge jump. And he was exposed to that for the football season and the wrestling season. So he got a lot of experience last year and, you know, breathing down a fire hose. So Preston will have, I think, a great year. Um, trying to think who else as we go. You know, I'm kind of on the, on the spot, but I think that's it for now. And I think A.J. Krupa at linebacker is going to have a great year for us. Uh, he's another young buck. He'll be a junior this year that is just a physical, gets after the football. It's it's old school Oxford football. Um you know, as far as that goes. When you look at Oxford, people look at, you know what I mean, tough-nosed, hard-nosed city, hard-nosed town. You know what I mean? Obviously, you know, when you look at the Wildcats, um, that's that's what I always think of in Oxford, hard-nosed, gritty town. You know what I mean? How's the community been? I mean, how's the community of Oxford been like, you know what I mean, like getting ready for the season? Like I said, I feel a lot of excitement out of our team uh, you know, when we have – our workout days, our numbers are up. And we have our uh, camp days, our numbers are up. And that just tells me kids are excited and they're ready to get going. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of had the last couple of years, we had a little bit of a lull 
Um, but you see guys chasing after leadership roles. You see guys competing. You see guys having fun. Those are all signs of a good team. And if you don't have a good team, you have nothing. You can have all the X's and O's you want, but if the team isn't together, having fun, working hard together, you're not going to have anything. So, and we embrace that brand that you talked about, that tough and gritty. That's those are things we talk about. When you leave Oxford, we want to make sure that you feel us. Um, when you look at when you look at Oxford, I mean, when you look at a course program strength, I mean, JV and freshmen. How's the how's the sub varsity's going? How's the um, lower levels going for you guys? Really good. Uh, both our sub varsity levels are are way up. You know, we're probably around 90 kids between the freshman and JV. For us, that's really good. So, um, as far as the younger levels are concerned, our numbers are up. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully, good things for Oxford as far as that goes. Just, again, at, at those levels, you want to make sure they're learning football, but they're having fun. Like the biggest the biggest process is getting them from OJW to middle school to the varsity level, which is the pinnacle of football for most kids in their hometown. Um, and keep having fun, you know. And obviously, at the varsity level, it gets a little more serious. You, you, your best 11 are on the field, um, but we want to make sure that kids all the way up, we're finding ways to make sure that football remains fun. Talk about life in the red. I mean, like, obviously, you we talked about this a little bit, so talk about, you know what I mean, like, your thoughts of each of the, of the teams in the division, like, um, what your initial thought process when you see or when the kids see um, – each team in the red, you know, when you look at teams like West Bloomfield, Orion, Clarkston, Adams, I mean, like that, that's not an easy slate at all. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it's uh same thing as before. Every one of them in the red has something else that they're really, really good at. So we're continuing to adjust to what, you know, what Adams does well. Everybody knows what Adams does well. And then we're adjusting to West Bloomfield spreading the ball out. And then Clarkston um, having a lot of variety in their offense. And obviously Orion, um, getting back to their old ways of their offense. So, you know, I, I, the, the more grown up your team is, we have a very senior heavy team this year, the better, better off you are. We've seen Adams before now. We've seen Clarkson. They've seen Clarkson two or three times now. They've seen Adams two or three times now. So uh, our maturity level of handling, you know, bigger opponents per se is a lot better than it was in the past. And when you look at, and then when you look at, of course, you know, getting in the playoffs last year, having those extra practices, that you have, that's a big deal, especially when you look at when you guys went four and five last year. Um, how important were those practices for you guys to have that playoff rep from last year with this group? Oh, it's huge because you get to get some young guys up. Um, and we try to make sure our, our freshman level has enough to compete, but our JV level has, if there's guys on freshman that can come up and play JV, we want to make sure our JV level is continuing to improve. And obviously there's those guys that are elite, like elite freshmen like Preston was who come up and they play varsity football. Um, but you get those guys up and now you get some of those guys that weren't up with you. They're on JV up with the varsity group and some guys stand out. And, and then you go into your off season like right now and, and you give them a little closer look. You know, I think um, Cardona is a, a safety for us that jumped off the screen at playoffs last year. You know, he's, He's making plays as a safety, going up there and tackling Luke or tackling whoever. Um, he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. So, again, that's things we're looking for is the guys that aren't afraid to get their nose dirty. Obviously, there's like when you look at Oxford, um, the expectation is really high there. When you look at a course, you know, what is – before I let you go, Coach, um, what is your expectations this year with the Wildcats um, this season? What is your expectations, your thoughts? Oh, I, I hate to play that game. I'm, obviously, I, I want to have – my expectation is that we dominate this offseason. You know, it's it's always the teams that win the offseason and you can come together. So, as a coaching staff, we got to be organized. We got to be prepared. We got to put the guys in the right spots. So, like, how quickly can we get our Z receiver set to go into the season to where he can just focus on his job? How quickly can we do this? How quickly can we do that? And we have enough guys this year to do that. Um, it's hard when you're going into a season where – you know, certain guys got to play both ways and he might get banged up. So you got to have this and that ready. But this year we have enough guys where we can, we can set guys in spots and, and let them play football at a fast level. So my expectation is that, Hey, we, we handle the rest of July the right way. We, we have a couple seven on sevens left. We go in and we compete, but then we get the training camp and the, the level just rises. And then from there, you just keep doing that week by week by week. And again, with our schedule, you have to keep raising your level week after week after week. And when he and looked, obviously our first our first game is Ike, so 
if you're looking at what's the expectation right now, it is prepare and do everything we can to beat Ike on Friday right now. When you look at that matchup week one, I mean, last year you guys had that tough loss to Eisenhower, and I know a lot of those kids who played on that on that team, you know, I really um, remember that game really well. What do you think it's going to take for you guys to go into Swinehart and knock off the Eagles? You know, I think we just got to play smart football. And I think last year we – we hurt ourselves. We had a lot of self, self-inflicted negatives, right? We had a bad snap on a field goal or a field goal blocked. We had a pick six. So it was just the the growing pains of a you know a, a younger quarterback, which none of that's his fault. We we, we dial it all the way in. We, we say, hey, you might be young, but we gave him we gave him a heavy load to carry. So now he'll be ready to carry that. You know, we have things here and there. You watch that game, and you, that's the one game all of us coaches kick ourselves because it's one that we should have had. You know, you're going into the fourth quarter and they have less than 100 yards of offense. And, you know, our offense has moved the, the ball, you know, at will. And then we just didn't put the ball in the end zone when we got in the red zone. So, again, it's one of those games that Ike is a really good team. So, when you get them in situations to score, you have to convert. So, um, so yeah, no, it's a great opponent for us. We love playing Eisenhower because, again, they're, they're a well-coached team. Historically, have been good. And we know that we're going to go in there and get a good matchup, and they, they're going to do what they're going to do. That they, they put on tape, they, they're good at it. One other player I want to talk about is um Jay, it's Jay Katie. Of course, he's your kicker and punter. Um, Played a little Drew. bit of defense. Oh, Drew, my bad. I get my Katie's mixed up. I don't know why. <laughs> um, But um, talk about how um, Drew's been doing um this offseason. I apologize to the Katie family for this. No. Uh, Drew, Drew always does. I mean, the, the Katie family, they're professional, right? So, they're always going to be there early. They're going to get their kicking in or they're going to stay after and kick even longer. So they're, you know, they're always going to be ready. So as a coach, I don't have to do as much in practice a, because I don't want to get their leg hurt, but I also trust that they're dialed in and they'll be ready to go for when that kick is needed. Um, athletically, both of them are super athletic. So it's, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you want to use them on offense and defense and everything else, but you know that you have a gem of a kicker and you want to make sure that they're ready to kick. So, I know Jay, we used everywhere. He was our corner. He was our tight end. He was our kicker. Uh, and that's a lot on his body. And they both play soccer. So as as a family, they've done a good job of cold tubbing, taking care of their bodies. But um, they are the exception as far as how they go about their business. They are they have pro mentality. So I always know that Drew, while he's playing soccer, he's going to come to football practice, go all out. And then he's going to go in the cold tub after, take care of his body, get protein, get water. Uh, he'll be ready to go the next day. But as far as kicking goes, Drew's done a good job. He's been doing a ton of camps. We haven't kicked much this offseason, um, but he's been playing more of the tight end role for us again, and he's done a good job. Before I let you go, Coach, um, any um, any uh, like a message to um, OA Nation about what to expect from Oxford football? Uh, no. Wish everybody good luck this offseason. You know, we're, we're excited about our season. We like our schedule and um, just ready to just ready to play Oxford brand football. Oxford coach, I'm Zach Lyon. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. I wish you the best of luck this season, and I will see you at media day. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yep. Take care, coach. All right, bye. Um, Oxford coach, Zach Lyon here on the podcast here. I'm um, talking Oxford. I'm telling you, Oxford's going to be scary. I mean, they're going to be a scary team. You just watch. I mean, like, they, they got a lot back, proven experience, you know, Kiss of death schedule when I look at it. I mean, like, so it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, so we'll see what happens. All right, everybody, we're going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw for the at blogspot.com. Wish everybody the best of luck as we um, continue through the heart of summer. Take care. God bless. See you all next week. God bless all.